Hi, I'm Ben, and welcome to this episode of Equip Tips, where we're going to be talking all about histograms. Histogram. What in the dickens is a histogram? It's that underutilized chart that all of us have on our DSLR camera that we have in Lightroom and we have in Photoshop. It is vastly underutilized and it kind of is a little bit daunting and might make you scratch your head and throw things at people when you first start learning about them. Today, let's kind of Today we're going to make things a little bit easier for you and kind of go over the very fundamental basics of what a histogram is and how we can use it to our advantage in photography. A histogram, as you can see here, due to, sophisticate, to, due to sophisticated computer technology and a box of crayons, we were able to come up with what a histogram would look like today. And basically all a histogram is, is a bar graph going from left to right up and down. Remember those bar graphs you learned in school? This is one of those. So starting on the x-axis, which is the horizontal, or if you're a photographer, the landscape side, on the left is going to be the darkest, darkest tones that our camera can read, meaning the blacks. As black as our camera can pick up and still have information there, meaning it's not underexposed, there's actually information that will be here. And as we go to the right, we're gonna to go to the very lightest or white point that our cameras can pick up. Anything over that margin is considered overexposed and there is no information left. Now on our Y axis or our up and down axis or if you're a photographer, portrait uh, sizing, you can see that all this is is the amount of pixels that fit within each one of those tones. So as you can see on this diagram this would be an overall exposed image where everything is 18 percent gray and metered appropriately as far as the confines of what a proper exposure would look like. So as you can see we have a lot of pixels that fall into the medium tones and we have a very few pixels that are black and very few pixels that are pure white. Now be advised that everything that fits in this graph is the dynamic range of our camera or the amount of information from, from dark to light that our camera can detect. If we were to underexpose our image, all these pixels would go over off the graph onto the underexposed side. If we were to overexpose our image, you're going to see a shape of a graph to where there's a lot of pixels toward the other side or the, the light side. Think of it this way. If I were to shoot a high key image where I'm shooting someone in front of a white background or I'm shooting a bride in a white dress in a white room, the shape of this graph is going to change. Instead of having all the pixels in the middle here, it's going to be really low to the really low to the x-axis here, and then toward the end, it's going to get bigger because we have more pixels that are lighter than there are pixels that are darker. If I'm shooting in a nightclub or a dark room, or I'm shooting in front of a black background, we're probably going to have more of the pixels weighted toward the darker side. Now, how do we use this to our advantage? Why would we use this? What's the point of even having this thing? Other than it's a hindrance and, you know, it blocks half my LCD screen if I put it on that mode to view it. Well, when you're exposing appropriately for an image, we want to make sure that our pixels, our information, isn't touching the dark side and we want to make sure that it's not touching the light side. If you have pixels or lines on this graph that are bumping the margins of underexposed and overexposed, we are, there's probably a possibility that we are losing that information. If you recall on the, the earlier episode when we talked about camera sensors and the paper cups and how our, how our camera records information, you'll notice that if we go below this, we are not getting in for any information into our photo cells of our sensor. There is no information going into that cup. Therefore, there's nothing there. It's just going to be black, blobby, muddy mess. If we overexpose our image and make these touch this side and go even past it, 
it's going to be overexposed and it's just going to be pure white. That could be if you overexpose the bride's dress. Maybe it's that highlight in that blonde person's hair. If you overexpose that and those pixels are out of that range of what your camera can have, you're no longer going to have any information there. You've now overfilled that paper cup with so much information that that photo cell on your sensor of your camera could no longer record that information. So the key is when looking at a histogram, we wanna make sure that we keep everything within the confines of the graph. So we wanna keep everything in the middle, you know, and obviously it doesn't have to be a perfect graph every time. Obviously environmental variables, the color and the tones of the image are gonna impact that. Such as as we were talking, if you're shooting a high key image, you're gonna have more pixels toward the, the the light side and if you're if you're shooting a low key image you're gonna have stuff toward the dark side so use a histogram to your advantage now whenever you're in Photoshop or you're in Lightroom you also have your histogram up in the upper right corner of your screen don't be afraid to use that you can use that and adjust that adjust if you're shooting in camera raw you can adjust your exposure you can adjust your blacks you can add fill light and if you overexpose you might even have to use your recovery slider but the key thing is is to watch your histogram when you can there's a lot of times when i'm shooting in bright outdoor sunlight and i've got a client with me and i don't have time to be looking at my lcd every three seconds and the sun is just so bright on that and there's such a glare on it that i can't even i can't even see the picture i really can't tell what i'm getting I know I'm in the right range. So I'll turn my LCD, LCD screen to where when I hit preview to see what I just shot, it's actually gonna be just showing me my histogram and not even the image at all. Because I, I can see the histogram in bright sunlight, but I can't always see my image. So when I'm shooting in bright sunlight, I don't even look at my picture, I'm looking at my histogram just to make sure that I'm not overexposing or underexposing my image and losing that information, making sure that my camera is recording that detail. Remember, if you go back to the episode uh, and we had Ryan Muirhead here and we were talking about film versus digital, or even with Zoo, uh, we were talking that digital cameras, even though they've come so far and they're getting better every year, they still don't have the range of what a film camera does. You know, if this is the range of, if this is the range of a digital camera, a film camera would be like this much more. I have this much more room to play with. I have this many more stops I can go under. I have this many more stops I can go over. Versus in a digital camera, we're cutting that thing down. And cameras are getting better, megapixels are getting better, digital noise is going down, but we still don't have the dynamic range of what film or celluloid gives us. So keep in mind, when you're shooting, watch your histogram and you won't go wrong. In summary, pay attention to your histogram. Use it in your camera, use it in your camera raw or Lightroom setup, and use it in Photoshop as you make your changes in your digital workflow. Use it as an advantage. Make sure that you keep stuff in the range of what's needed. We don't wanna lose information. We wanna maintain as much information as we can, even with our limited range that our digital cameras have. I'm Big Ben with Equip Tips. And I will see you next time. I bid you happy shooting.